but I'm also going to be recording it for the uh, blueprint reading class as well, since we're talking about uh, insulation as well. So let's see. Uh, da -da. Get back on track here. Okay, so today we are talking insulation. And so I'm going to open these things up and turn my phone off. Okay, so um, let's talk insulation. So I'm going to go over to the, uh, I'm going to go over here to the uh, blueprint reading um, print that I've got, that I've been using, and we're just kind of, so let me, let me show you what this looks like in case you guys haven't seen it. This is one heck of a daggum house. And if you've ever had blueprint reading with me, you've cussed the, uh, the lake house. So the lake house is a very unusual uh, house uh, that I like to use because it's, you know, it's a hard, it's a hard print. It's got some uh, metal in it. It's got some, uh, you know, it's a couple of levels. And so when we look at the, the cross section or the wall section here, it shows that we have all kinds of insulation in here. And so in this wall portion up here, we've got insulation and we've got insulation through here. And this is particularly here is called uh, an R30 bat. So I'm gonna describe to you what uh, at insulations uh, are down here we have an R19 and it says six inch and that's what I want you to really pay a close attention to because it also says that there's two by sixes here. Well, if any of you guys remember a two by six is one and a half by five and a half. So you can't achieve an R19 uh, in a five and a half inch wall. So uh, going on down, we have some things going on down here where we have this foundation and we have an R13 rigid insulation. So I'm gonna go over uh, rigid insulation with you. And also you'll see that it goes down into the earth here. So it's, a, it's pretty common practice today that we take insulation all the way down into the earth. And I don't know why that popped up. Uh, so let me go over here and let's let me draw a little bit on this. Uh, so not only does it go underground and, you know, we've got it going here, but in, in most cases, we try to bring it out about two feet, uh, up under the, the slab here. So what happens is because this is all cold, then we end up drawing heat out and this rigid insulation stops that. Okay, so you got to remember that the second law of thermodynamics is that uh, heat moves to cold. All right, so cold doesn't go anywhere. Heat moves to cold. And I, I had a little cousin, she's from Montana and she's experienced uh, negative 40 degrees and you know so she shows up here in short sleeve shirt yesterday and you know she's just all hunky-dory happy and uh, so she asked me a question so uh, so when I'm wearing a toboggan and a coat so what am I trying to do well you're trying to you're trying to put a barrier between you and the cold so that you stop the flow of heat to cold so let's start off talking about heat and cold. Heat and cold. All right, so we said that heat moves to cold. And this speed limit or this, you know, to, to record the speed there, we talk about a U factor. And the U factor is the rate in which heat moves to cold. And then we use what is called an R value. 
And the R value is, that means resistance. The resistance to the flow of heat. So it is basically a barrier that we're trying to create. So when we, when we buy windows and doors, you'll see that windows and doors, they have a rating called a U factor. And the U factor is usually like a point three to point four. And then when we talk about R values, R values are whole numbers, one through, well, the most I've ever seen is 56. An R56 is required on roofs in Canada. So, uh, so R values are in a sense, a, what, what is the word I'm looking for? It is a reciprocal of the U factor. So let's take, for instance, let's start off with this window. All right, so we have a U factor of 0.3. So I wanna know what that equivalent is in an R value. So all I have to do is say one over three. So let's go down here and get the calculator. One, or excuse me, 0.3 divided by 0.3, and we end up with 3.33. 3.33, and that is the R value of this window. All right, now, let's think about something else. In the state of North Carolina, for our floors, we gotta have an R19. In our walls, actually, just hang on, man, let me go to the roof first. Our roofs, actually, it doesn't matter because, yeah, let's just go back to the walls. So our walls require an R13 plus 5. Now, so what the heck does that mean? So what that means is that if we are, we have a wall, And what they're wanting us to do, so this is the stud portion of it. I'll show a little stud down here so you can see that. And then we've got the drywall, and then we've got our, our uh, siding on the outside of it. So we want to put a bat insulation in the center of this, and that must equal an R13. The R, I'm sorry, not R5, it's R2, duh. Um, my mind is not working this morning, sorry, or this afternoon. 13 plus two. So that gives you a total of 15. That's what was on my mind. So where is that 15 from? So that 15 or that, uh, that other two comes from some sort of sheathing or what we call a thermal skin on the wall, and this is always on the outside of the wall, and this is equivalent to an R2. So total, we end up with an R value of 15, but actually, I'm gonna get to the point where I'm gonna show you that this actually increases, uh, or it could increase, hopefully it increases, and you know, so it's not always an easy thing to get to this uh, 13 plus two. So let's think about something else. Let's think about, uh, so we want to do a wall that, uh, you, you know, a lot of contractors today, they want to, uh, they want to put on sheathing on the outside. So we've got our stud wall, show my two before there. This is my two before plate. This is the studs and they want to do plywood. All right. So it just, they always seem to, everybody wants to do plywood. Now, why? Well, you know, let's say that we're going to use, we're going to put vinyl siding on the side of this thing. So we're going to have some vinyl siding here. All right. Now, if I don't have this plywood on here, this sheathing, then technically somebody could just, you know, bust through in between the studs and break into the house. Okay. That is, I've never heard that of happening, but I'm I'm sure it could. So what we do is on top of this, it could be used 
that rigid insulation on here. And I'm not going to pretty that thing up all the way, but I'm just going to kind of show you uh, that that is the rigid insulation. You'll hear the term blue board uh, a lot of times, and uh, that's just because of the color of um, who's, whose is it? It's not uh, uh, Owens Corning's is pink. I don't remember. Maybe it's uh, Dow. I think it is Dow. Dow uh, came up and theirs is blue. And, and so a lot of people call it blue board. Uh, and so this would be placed on top of the sheathing if the sheathing is required, but the sheathing is not necessarily required. The reason that we put sheathing up uh, is because it's an easy way to keep this wall from racking. And you know, we've talked about racking a little bit as to where, you know, this can, can, can go one way or the other and can rack out. But if we put, if we put some blue board on there, then that becomes rigid and it eliminates that racking. All right, so that's a simple and easy way to do that. So how could we do this without using sheathing is we basically put that, uh, that diagonal lead in brace in there. And this can be made out of wood. It can be made out of metal. Uh, the metal ones are really the, my favorite. Uh, it's basically just a, a piece of metal that looks kind of like a T and you take your saw and run a kerf with your saw blade down through there. And then this goes right into it and you nail uh, to each stud with uh, the nails required uh, for that T and it works out really well. And then you can put the blue board on there or the rigid insulation on there all over the house and you have a really, really nice tight um, house there. Now, one thing to be said, you know, this material here is, uh, it has low permeability and it has, uh, it, it, it will stop moisture. So if you tape all of your joints uh, across through here of that blue board, you do not have to use house wrap on that. So back over here to North Carolina, Let's move on to our roof, and there's where another little kind of iffy situation is uh, that I want to explain to you, is that when we do our roofs, a couple of things have to happen here. We have to, uh, in, the, in the old day, uh, when we were using um, just our uh, rafters, we were cutting rafters out of two by material. And then we were placing, uh, placing them on the wall. And then we had our ceiling joists going across through here. So this space right here, you know, if we used a two by six here and we used a two by six here, we're not looking at, but about just golly, probably, well, in a lot of cases, it was less than. Actually, I've got this drawn a little bit large there, but you know, technically, this would uh, this ceiling joist would actually be sticking out above it a little bit, and we'd have to kind of cut that off right there. Uh, so, meaning that this measurement right here was only about five and a half uh, inches, maybe five to five and a half inches. All right, so the R value in your roof must be an R30 uh, or an R38. Now, let me explain to you the difference in that. All right, so let's say that we're going to build, we're going to build two houses. And the, the one house is going to be built like this. We're going to use the rafters, and there's going to be five to five and a half inches of space here. And then the next house that we're going to build, we're actually going to we're going to put our ceiling joists in at the top of our double. This is the top of our double stud, there, our double top plate. So kind of give you a, a same reference there. We've got that double top plate here, double top plate here. And then we're going to raise the heel up. Uh, and this can be done, if we're using rafters, this can be done with just a knee wall. And then we're going to put our joists up there like that which now gives us any kind of space. We don't know what this is, but it's, it's, it's certainly much more than five to five and a half inches. 
Okay, so if I can put my insulation at full height value all the way to the outside of the wall, I can use R30. If for some reason I'm putting this insulation in and it hits a point in which it has to be compressed before it hits the outside of this wall, then I have to put in an R38. Okay, so if I can go full height with whatever insulation I'm using, and we're gonna we're gonna figure out how much insulation we need there. Uh, if if I can go all the way, I can do an R30. If I can't go all the way at full height, I have to do an R38. Now remember that we're in Western North Carolina. This is uh, this is these numbers here are all through the state. All right. So, but if you think about it, when you get up around the higher elevations, this could potentially go to an R42 if you're really wanting to be uh, efficient in a higher elevation. When I say higher elevation, I'm talking 3000 uh, plus. So anything above 3000 feet should be an R42 on that. So let's look at the different types of insulations there are. Let's start with the bat insulation. Bat insulation, and let's see, let me make sure that This, this video right here, how it's made, fiberglass insulation is a really cool uh, video and it's, it's, uh, you'll be able to see it and it's, it's how this stuff is made. So bat insulation. So this is bat insulation. It's the itchy stuff that you, you guys think about. And so it comes in a roll and it's put in place and this is not uh, this is a bad insulation, but it's not what we think of as uh, fiberglass insulation. So you can buy uh, bad insulation in a fiberglass, which is what you're seeing here, the pink stuff, and you can get it in rock wool, which is the, the, the brown stuff. So the, the fiberglass, obviously, it is made of fibers of glass. So if you watch that video on how it's made, it, you, it's, it's just like making, uh, what am I trying to think of? It's just like making uh, cotton candy, okay? Uh, rock wool, I don't know, <coughs> excuse me, I really don't know what rock wool is made of. I've never, never slowed down long enough to, to really see what it is. So uh, there is a right way and a wrong way to put it up. This is the wrong way, all right? And I'll explain to you in just a minute why this is the wrong way. This is the wrong way. The right way should look more like this, even though I don't like that. Um, see what this one looks like. That is okay. Da -da -da. So bad insulation installed. Why does my caps keep coming on? Installed. Do, do, do. All right, so this one is installed correctly. This one is installed correctly. See how nice and flat that is? Uh, this one is not, okay? So let's go back over here and talk about why it's, it's not the way it is. So here we have, uh, we've got our wall, maybe. We've got our we've got our wall here, and we have our studs. And so when you when you open up a pack of uh, bat insulation, you will see that it has paper on one side. Now this is the paper is called craft. crafted, 
Okay, so crafted insulation. And then, uh, actually, let's go with pink since most of what we've seen is pink. And then it has the insulation on there. And it has this little wing that, that comes out here on either side of it. And this is probably about uh, three quarters of an inch, something like that. Got that little wing of paper. So that wing is meant to go flat along on the studs and you attach that with staples. And then you've got your insulation that is full fluffiness inside their cavity. So drywallers hate this because they can't glue their drywall to the studs and they have to nail it. And then that means that they have more holes that they have to fill. So what they want you to do is they want you to take those ears. Let's see, let me change to different. They want to, they want you to take those ears and put them to the inside of the stud here. And then when you're in your, the rest of your craft paper will kind of do this number because your insulation is trying to push against that. And you have this void or gap in here. This is bad. And you'll understand here before that's all over with why I'm getting to this. So, you know, when we're talking about this right here, whatever we put in here, if we put in an R, so you can get in a two by four wall, you can get R13 uh, and an R15 in this wall, uh, in a two by four wall. If you if you were to put it in in this direction, yeah, you might have an R13 to 15 right there, but over here, you're going to have maybe an R10, uh, you know, depending on how bad it gets. So this is going to be less insulation. Anytime that this insulation is compressed in any way, shape, or form, then it, uh, it, it uh, degrades the insulation. Let's think about this. You have... Uh, you have fiberglass, all right? So this is fiberglass and it's all going in all sorts of directions, right? So the, the fiberglass itself is not what is, is your insulation. Your insulation is all this air that is caught between those fibers. That's where the insulation comes in. That's what stops movement. So sealed air, and we'll look at it. I'm, 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 I'm going to say, I think I remember that it's 3.65. 3.65, this is sealed air, um, not just an airspace. So sealed air is 3.65 R per inch. All right, so for every inch, which on my screen, this is about an inch right there. Uh, for every inch, you're going to have 3.65. So if we have three and a half inches here, 3.5 inches, then we have 3.5 times 3.65, and that will give us an R12.775. So a total of 12.775 R, all right? And that's just sealed air, okay? So that's just sealed air. But the bat insulation is very close to this number here, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, obviously, so that we can get an R13 out of it. I mean, that's pretty daggum close if we just round it up to that. Now, if we start compressing that, all right? So if we start compressing this and you just look out at your window right now, if we compress that, we end up with a sheet of glass. All right. So how much thermal, um, how much uh, heat gain can we stop here? None, not in a piece of glass. I mean, you know, you, you know as well as I do that I can, I can, you know, flip my lighter and I can feel the heat radiate through on the other side of that piece of glass. Glass in a condensed form is a conductor of heat. 
but glass in a fluffy form is a an insulator okay so let's let's keep going and talk about some more insulation so let's talk about the rigid insulation that I was talking about and we have several different types of rigid insulation make sure that you finish out uh, a search when you put it in there. So you've got rigid insulation and you've got all short, set, you know, just tons and tons of different types of insulation. So, uh, remember the blue board? Actually, this is kind of a greenish look, uh, but this is what I was talking about, blue board. This is also the same stuff here. So let me just copy this picture right quick and let's go back over here. I didn't want to do that. Okay, so I've got uh, I've got this big stack of insulation here, and this is rigid, meaning that it is hard. And so we have different types of rigid insulation. We have uh, XPS, which is extruded poly. Styrene, I think that's right. XPS, extruded polystyrene. And so what does extruded mean? You're gonna love this uh, example here. This is an extruder. Remember that when you was growing up, uh, you had that, you put the little clay in here and you, whatever you got here, you push it through and it comes out that shape. All right. So that is an extrusion. Okay. So, or an extruder in this case. So uh, this is how, that is how the XPS is made. The, the foam is, is softened and then it is pressed uh, through a die that gives us whatever shape that we want here and for some reason there. So this is all XPS right here. The ones that I'm pointing at are XPS. The ones in red are XPS, extruded polystyrene. Now let's, uh, oh, and by the way, so this is, uh, this is an R5 per inch. Okay, so if I've got three inches of this stuff, that's 15. That's an R15. If that's, if that's three inches, that's going to be equal to an R15. Let's go back and, and look at this one here. Let me change colors. So we'll, we'll make it green. So now I'm talking about this white stuff here. It looks like your uh, coffee cup, uh, your that god awful uh, white cooler that used to sit in the back seat as you guys were going to the beach and used to rattle at you that just the sound of of styrofoam uh, i can't make the sound now because i've got a cup here that's styrofoam but um you know that uh just drives me nuts i hate that sound this is expanded expand expanded polystyrene. Expanded polystyrene. So what that means is this was put into a mold in a very small dot type form, little beads, and then whatever process they do, then these beads expand and fill up the void. All right. So this expanded polystyrene is only good for an R4 per inch. So since this looks like about maybe an inch or something here, then we're only going to have an R4 out of this. But if, you know, we're looking at it the same, if we had three inches of the expanded, then uh, we're only going to have an R12. So three inches of this type would only equal an R12. So now we're going to the yellow stuff here. Let me just change colors again. Going to the yellow stuff here. 
all of this here. This is the super Superman of all insulations. This is, and ready for this, now you watch, I'm going to spell it correctly. I know I can't spell shit, but I can spell this word. Poly, iso, cyan, maybe I can spell it right, cyan, you rate. Poly, iso, cyan, you rate. See, if you just break it down, I can spell everything. So polyisocyanurate, it is the best of the best of the best. And with this, you get an R7.2 per inch out of the polyisocyanurate. So let me back up just for a minute and talk about how heat flows. Uh, I know in, in some of you guys have me for building science and uh, select all, delete. So let's talk about uh, the way flow or the way heat flows. I told you that, that heat flows to cold. And there's three ways of it doing it. Number one, radiation. Number two, conduction. Number three, convection. Okay, so radiation is direct heat flow. So let me let me go off of this for a minute and show you what I'm talking about. Well, I don't know why mine's not coming up. We can all see Sam though. I don't know why I'm on. Anyway, okay, so you can see mine. All right, so there's my lighter. If I hold my hand to the side, I can feel heat. Okay, so that is, that is exactly radiation. Okay, because I hold my lighter up and I can feel that heat right there, that is radiation alone. So that is what we feel from the sun. Okay, that's what we feel when we're standing beside, and I want to make sure that I, beside a campfire. That's what I'm feeling, is the direct movement of heat from the heat source to me. Now, conduction. Actually, let's skip down here to the convection next. So I had my lighter and I could feel the heat to the side of it. Now, if I put my hand over it, I can feel a lot of heat uh, because I'm feeling two types of heat. I'm feeling the radiation and the convection because the convection is heated air gas or a liquid all right so uh the old radiator systems uh that we used to have in school some of you well say so some of you don't remember that so the radiator in your car is a convection system so we've got our engine over here and it's it's plugging away and you guys are going 100 miles an hour down the interstate and this thing is really hot but up here in front we've got this funky looking thing called a radiator that has water coming out of it. And uh, we're trying to get rid of the heat that's in our engine because we're taking this hot water, running it through our radiator in which air is passing through it. And remember that heat moves to cold. So the air is drawing the heat out of this hot water and is cooling it down. And then the water is going into the engine, pulling heat away from the engine. So it's, you know, and we're basically just moving the heat from the engine into the air. Uh, and that is uh, basically, that is the first law of thermodynamics is that uh, energy is not created or destroyed, but that it 
is uh, changed from one form to another. So we're taking heat from an engine from exploding gasoline and turning it into the water, boiling water is going into the, to the radiator, which we have fins that's gonna capture air and we're gonna pull that heat out of that. So that's convection. That's the, the, the next way of moving heat from one place to another. Lastly is conduction. And conduction, you have to have a solid. Uh, so, you know, you've got, you're standing over here, you got your campfire going, and let's put that in red. Good God, I can't believe I drew a picture of a blue flame. So it's not, hopefully your campfire's not that hot, but there's your nice little campfire around through there. And you, you got the smoke coming off of it and the heat's coming off of it. And, you know, you got your frying pan over here and you're trying to cook that bacon first thing in the morning. And there's your frying pan. It's got that handle coming out of it. And there you stand with your hand on that thing, trying to get your bacon going. And that heat is going from the hot portion of the pan to the cold portion of the handle. And then it's going to be a sizzle, sizzle across that skin because you just burnt the shit out of yourself because you had a hold of the hot pan and you didn't have some sort of pot holder or something there. So conduction can be moved through gas, heat, air, liquid, uh, or excuse me, air, gas, and liquid. It can be moved through a solid and you can feel it directly. So going back to those, that, uh, that insulation we was talking about, let me go back over here and find that one picture again. Bridge insulation. That was a good picture. Keep using that. Opening a new, no. I want to copy the engine and I'm going to go back over here and we're going to drop it in. Okay, so look very closely at this insulation right here. See that? See that piece of, of, of um, foil? Okay, that piece of foil right there. So in a house, especially over the years, we have been trying to, to stop the flow of heat through one of those three, and that's convection. So we've been putting, you know, insulation, bad insulation in our ceilings, in our walls, in our floors. And so this is only stopping air from moving in or not really air from moving in but air so if you got your wall here and you got your insulation here you're trying to stop that flow uh from moving from this skin to this skin and there's nothing in here but air so you're trying to slow down convection all right we've never tried to to stop any other type of, of heat. We've just been, all these years, we've been trying to do it with by convection alone. But what hits the, what hits our roof here? We got radiation coming in here, super bad, all right? It's summertime. It's June, July, August in the middle of West North Carolina. It's like freaking Africa. So how can we stop this radiation? By that little piece of foil, all right? by that little piece of foil. It's reflective. So if you're building a house, and I know this sounds silly, but if you're building a house and before you put your roof on, you go get you a big old roll of Reynolds wrap and you just roll it all over that roof right there. So we put that Reynolds wrap on there. What's gonna happen to all of that is it's gonna go, it's gonna go, ding, it's gonna bounce right off of there and it's not going to absorb into it. Okay. If we could, we could, we would put a big old mirror up there and that way we could blind all the 747s flying over and we wouldn't ever worry about having our roof get hot because we're reflecting all of that radiation on there. So uh, the bad insulation is good in the wintertime because we're trying to stop the heat from trying to escape out through the roof. And by the way, guys, heat does not rise. Hate to break it to you, 
but heat does not rise. The only way that heat flows in an upward portion is because of cold air has gravity and is, is pushing down. It, it weighs heavier than hot air and it is moving the cold, the hot air up. Okay. Heat does not rise because rise means that it does it by itself. No, it does not. It is forced. If you want to say heat, heat forces its way up. It is forced what on its is forced upward. Then that's more uh, proper English. But heat does not rise. If if we took uh, something hot and cold and put it into a vacuum with no gravity uh, pulling on it at all the heat and cold would not move. The heat would move towards the cold. Uh, so in other words, let's say for instance, we had a little box here and we had a uh, hundred degrees of something warm in here. And we, over here we had zero degrees and we're in a, in a vacuum in space and we don't have gravity. So this is going to flow this way and the whole thing's gonna equal out and become 50 degrees. <coughs> now, of course that's, you know, in space, it's like a negative 150 degrees, but you know, we're just putting it into a anti-gravity, anti-vacuum uh, or, or in a vacuum situation where nothing else affects it, which we can only do in theory. So you guys understand how I'm getting to that 50 degrees. All right, so now all of a sudden we've got radiation involved in this. So we're using that piece of foil there and we're putting in that radiation barrier, okay? This is a solid, so it is a conduction barrier. And when we were over there looking at that, uh, when we were over here looking at this, a minute ago. So this is that conduction barrier. So we're trying to uh, we're trying to get in here, and we're all of this is solids. Every bit of this is solids. So we are we've got a barrier here, and I'm gonna I'm gonna draw this extra little piece up here. And uh, so we have got a barrier here that's gonna stop the flow of heat from escaping in the wintertime. And then in the summertime, well, actually in the summertime, this is still gonna be 50 degrees here. So um, after you get one foot down at least anyway. So, you know, e even it, it, in the summertime, if it's 65 degrees in here, then this is still trying to push outward to that 50 degree ground out there. So we've got We've got some sort of barrier here to stop that. And again, this is relatively new. Uh, putting the putting those barriers in here like this maybe been around for about 20 years, not very long at all. Uh, the, the using the foil faced is still not caught on. Nobody nobody does it. I mean, literally, you could you could roll your house with Reynolds wrap, and it would increase your effectiveness over your insulation by twice. I mean, you know, cause it's just nuts. It, 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 it works. I don't know why we don't do that. Okay, so now we've got our, our foams, our, I'm sorry, our rigid insulations. Let's talk foam. So these are foams, but uh, there's some of that, uh, Oh, and I didn't, the EPS is the expanded polystyrene. XPS is, so this is EPS. This is XPS, extruded versus expanded. Uh, da, 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 da. Let's see. Let me go ahead and, and introduce you to, uh, the R value table. I can spell it right. I like using the Colorado Energy Org uh, R value table. So 
In this, it gives you a list of every type of known insulation and their R values. Now, there's two things to consider here. You have an R value per inch and you have an R value per thickness sold. So three and a half inches of bat insulation is an R11. Three and five eighths inches of fiberglass insulation is an R13. Then you get into the high density, which is an R15. I, I think I showed you that. So it can go from an R11. R11 is almost unheard of anymore. Uh, when my house was built in 1966, uh, R11 was what's in there. That was all that there was. And I was lucky to get that. Uh, but, you know, as, as in today, it's easily R13, even though it says it's an R, uh, or excuse me, it's five and uh, three and five eighths, uh, it still will give you an R13 with a, a three and a half. So you can get the high density at 15. And then look at this, six and a half inch bad insulation will give you an R19. What did we talk about a minute ago? That the... Uh, you know, a two by six wall is only five and a half inches. So you cannot get an R19 at a five and a half inch wall. So, uh, and my wife's gonna call me. I'm zooming, sorry, love you see you, bye. Um, so, you know, you can get the high density five and a quarter and you get an R21. And then, you know, it goes through all of your insulations. But then let's look down here. Oh, one thing to say, ignore this one. This one is super wrong. Because if you go right down here and you find polyisocyanurate at one inch, it is 7.2. So uh, ignore this one. I don't know why they, why they did that and why it's the way it is, but just ignore that one. So not only do they give you the material, the insulation material, but they also give you construction materials because everything has uh, some sort of resistance to it. Uh, even a thin piece of plastic has a little bit of resistance. Uh, in other words, it's like a look at this. Aluminum, steel, vinyl siding, hollow back, has no insulation behind it. It still gives you a 0.61. Uh, windows, we talked about uh, windows, which are, you know, the, uh, well, let's say, let me, I didn't talk about low E windows. So low E windows, uh, low E windows, so low E windows is a coating that goes on there, and that low E stops the transfer of UV light. So it's kind of like putting Reynolds wrap on your windows. It stops and reflects that, that UV light that's coming from the sun and only visible light comes into it. You guys, uh, if you haven't already, look up electro, uh, I lost my train of thought. Electromagnetic, electromagnetic, elect Let's see here. Electromagnetic. Yes, electromagnetic waves. There you go. So look up electromagnetic wave spectrums and so forth and, and study that because low E or heat in, in itself is, uh, you know, works with electromagnetic. And so we get that 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 low E. So that low, what does low E mean? E Mississippi. That's a big word. Uh, so low E Mississippi, and that's why we call it low E, is because I can't spell low E Mississippi. There's the word low E Mississippi glass, and so and that's how it works. It just stops that that UV transfer of of heat coming into the house, uh, and also in the wintertime. So. Any type of UV, it transfers or stops it. Uh, and so that's what that's talking about there with low E glass. Uh, it gives you doors. And, and then we talk about air films. So uh, let's go over here. Let's go back over here for a second and make this big and select all. 
and delete. Let's talk about a little bit of a little bit more about heat. So let's say uh, we are actually I want to get rid of that one. Go to this one because it's bigger. You get up in the morning and you walk outside your house. Here's your house. And you step outside, see what the weather's going to be. And it is uh, 10 degrees. All right. So we've got a little bit of, maybe have a little bit of icicles hanging off your roof for a little bit. And it's 10 degrees. That means it's cold. But now you're standing out there. There's no wind blowing, and but you're cold. Now let's uh, let's step outside. Uh, new day. We're going to step outside the house here, and it's still 10 degrees, but the winds are blowing, and the winds are blowing good and hard. So you're standing over there now, and you're shaking because you're so cold. How is that so? Well, let's look at something. Here's your hand. Here's my hand. It's a terrible drawing of a hand, but you get the idea. That's fine. So we have, it's 10 degrees out here, and your body is at 98 degrees. Hopefully it's not more than that, otherwise you're going to be having the coronavirus. But it's 98 degrees, or it's, yeah, 98 degrees, 97.6 or whatever, I don't even remember, 97.6, 97.8, 97.8. So uh, that doesn't mean that there is a line in which we draw right here that's going to go from 98 degrees to 10 degrees. That doesn't happen. What you do is, you know, very close to this, uh, very, very close to this, it might be uh, 80 degrees. I guess I could make that a little bit bigger, 80 degrees. And then a little bit further away, it's, uh, it's 70 degrees. And a little bit further away, it's 60 degrees. And as we keep going on out, it gets a little colder and a little colder and a little colder until we get down to, you know, that uh, 10 degrees that we got going on here. So this is a distance. What happens is that you've got, you've got heat coming off of there. You got radiation leaving your arms. Okay. But now let's, let's take in the old big bad uh, Jack Frost's old man winter's air through here and it's blowing across through here very fast. So what's happening is it's getting rid of all of this and it's blowing it away. And by doing that, then yes, now all of a sudden it goes from 98 degrees to 10 degrees very quickly because you've eliminated, you've not really eliminated this, but in, you know, here we're talking about this much space, but over here where the wind's blowing, you got this much space, okay? It's very, very small because it's blowing it away. And again, hot moves to cold. So you are trying to, you know, you're trying to heat that air just like your car and the radiator. So that's why it feels really cold to us when the wind is blowing at 10 degrees versus 10 degrees when it's not blowing. And that's why people like me with Sasquatch all over their arm can stay warmer than people who have no hair on their arm because we are allowing that, that hair to, to hold, you know, just like what I was telling you about insulation, uh, it's able to hold warm air in there so that the, so that the wind does not blow it off through there and we can stay warmer. Obviously, that's why we put on sweaters and so forth to add a little bit more R value to us. And that's why, you know, dogs, especially dogs like uh, Alaskan Malamutes and um, Huskies, their hair, believe it or not, is much different from a regular dog's hair. So this is, we'll say that this is a dog's hair here, but now let's look at the hair of a uh, of a Husky or a Malamute, they have the dog hair like everybody else's dog does, but then they have a finer hair 
underneath it. They have like a second coat and this hair is even thicker than this hair here. So I can take Olivia, which is my, uh, my all white uh, Husky and I can put her in my black truck and these little hairs are just flying all over the place, all filling up my truck, well, and the house. But then these, this dander here that is so far deep down in there, it's still there. It doesn't go anywhere. And it's so weird. Uh, this dog can go out here and roll in mud. And within an hour, she is perfectly white again. I, it's, I, I don't get it. I wish the rest of the dogs could do that. So her hair is specially designed uh, to prevent the wicking of air or warmth off of your skin. And that is where these air films come in. So we, we talk about these air films and we incorporate them into our calculations to find out what walls are actually at. And we're going to do that. Uh, so actually, I tell you what, it's 2.57. Let's take us a break. Let me go get me something to drink and uh, we'll come back and uh, start talking about how to do insulation in a wall. So I'll see you in about 10 minutes. Okay, so we're back. So let's look at something here and let's figure out what happens in a wall. So we've got let me just build this up very quickly here. And then we're going to have put in some studs. on by hand. Okay, so what we're doing is I'm drawing in uh, a wall and we're looking down into the wall. So these are, here are our studs and uh, we have our drywall. We have the cavity. We have our sheathing. And we have our siding. This is uh, outside, and this, of course, is inside. And we have our air film inside and our air film outside. We have our insulation. And I'm going to leave that one so we have a void in the wall. I'm getting sloppy at my insulation here. All right, so we have three defined lines that we need to talk about. Number one, we have a defined line that is framing. So it is going through the framing itself. The second one is going to go through our insulation. And then lastly, we're going to go through our gaps. All right, now, how to remember this.
fig framing insulation gaps so what we need to do is to start a list and let's see let's just do excel that way it can do all of my numbers for me all right so i have uh framing i have insulate now let's see, let's do it let's do it a different way so we have our outside film we have our siding We have our sheathing. We have our cavity. We have our uh, interior finish, or we'll just say drywall in this case. And then we have our inside film. Here at the top, we're gonna have our framing, insulation, Gaps, gaps, gaps. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and set this up to add all of these together for me. So I'm just going to copy that, paste it, and paste it. Maybe. There. Okay, so now what we got to do is we got to figure out what all of these values are. What we're trying to do is we're trying to find the R value of each one of these uh, of each one of these lines through our wall here. So in other words, what's the R value here on the framing? What's the R value of our insulation? So we need to know what our R value is framing. We need to know our R value here at the insulation and we need to know our R value here at gaps. So uh, we go back over here to our energy thing here. And let's just actually, let's decide what's on this. So we said it was siding. <coughs> so we'll say that it, uh, we'll say that we have wood siding. We have, um, usually that's about seven sixteenths inch sheathing of some sort on there. Uh, in the cavities, we're gonna say that we have two by fours and we have an R13 insulation, bat insulation in there. And the gap is going to be less than that. So in this particular case, we have no insulation there. So that's going to be an R0. And then our drywall. So we need to figure out what each one of these is. So we go over to our, our site here. And the first thing we want to do is come down here to the bottom and look at our, uh, our air films. Generally, where we are, we, uh, we're going to figure up for our wintertime uh, air film. So I'm going to use an interior air film of 0.68 and an exterior air film of 0.17. So I'm going to go over here to my Excel site. And my outside was 0.17. My inside air film was 0.68. All right, so also let's look at something else. All right, so that air film goes through all three of these segments, all three of these sections. So I can go ahead and just transfer that number all the way through each one of those lines that we have here. Now let's talk about the siding. We have wood siding. So we're going to go to our, uh, we're gonna to go to do, 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 finishes, siding materials, there we go. Uh, hardboard, uh, wood lap, there you go. Wood lap, wood bevel lap rather. And that is a 0 0.08. Remember that this is per inch, all right? And again, this goes through all three of these lines. I'm gonna say it was 0.8. All right, so I can go in here and I can say an R.8, and that is going through all three of the lines here. Now let's talk about our sheathing. So we're gonna to go to sheathing materials, and I said that it was 5 sixteenths, didn't I? 
So I'm going to cheat. I'm going to change that to half. So here, I'm going to say that that's half. I mean, I, I could use seven sixteenths, but it would take me a little bit to figure it out. So I'm just, I'm just going to delete that and say that it's a half an inch. There we go. Half. I'm sorry. I said, yeah, yeah, that's right. Sheathing. Half inch sheathing. Okay, so half inch sheathing is going to be 0.63. So I'm going to be in 0.63 right there. Again, my sheathing goes through all three of these points. I'm going to drop down here to the drywall right quick. So we have half inch jip board, um, interior finishes, gypsum board, half inch, and, uh, and that's a 0.45. And then again, that also goes through all three layers there. 0.45 going through all three layers. Now, here's where we're going to have something a little different. We said that we were using two by fours in the framing. So we need to figure for the three and a half inch, not the inch and a half. So we're we're transferring three and a half inches here that we've got to figure out where that's how much that is. So we'll go over here and we're going to find, we'll go back up here to our construction materials. We have two by fours. Notice that it has three and a half and all the way across. And that gives us a 4.38. If you do that long handed, you, uh, this one here, and you know, so you've got soft wood lumber is 1.25. You'll find out that they've rounded this up. 1.25 times 3.5 gives us 3 4.375, but they've just rounded it up to two decimals at 4.38. So we'll go in here and we'll say 4.38. All right, that does not go all the way across because we're only trying to figure up for this framing here. So now we need to figure out for our insulation. We said that we had an R9, or R13 bed insulation in there. So I don't have to look on here. I already know that it's going to be an R13. So I can just go ahead and put an R13 in there. And then in my gaps, I said that there was no insulation in there. So I'm going to put the zero in there. Most of the time, we don't put zero when we're doing these calculations. There's generally some... Uh, some type of insulation that's going to show up. Uh, and uh, so let me let me explain to you what I mean by that. Let's see, go here, open up that. And da -da. Man, I hope I don't have anything incriminating in here. Um, so I took some pictures with the, with the uh, imaging camera of my house. This is my office. This is where I'm sitting right now. And it was pretty cold that day. And you see here, I've got a bunch of windows here, but then I've got this space up here that is showing a little bit of heat coming through that. All right, so that doesn't mean that there's no insulation in there, but there's small insulation in there. And we can use these solar imaging, uh, solar, these thermal imaging uh, pictures. Obviously you can, you can see how that works and shows what's hot and what's not hot. And uh, so my wife is, you know, she looks like she's a bear right there. So these things are really cool to work with. Let me see if I can uh, find a better picture. Um, let's see what shows up. Well, that ain't a thermal image, is it? So I'm not going to sit here and waste your time. I am going to go find a another thermal image. Thermal image. The reason I want to do that was I wanted to, we can go in and, sh and look at a wall and uh, good grief, come on. Everybody uses their thermal image camera to shoot people and pigs and other things. Thermal image of wall. 
Okay, this is perfect. All right, so in this thermal image, you can see that uh, there are there are studs in the wall. All right, so that doesn't mean that there's no insulation in there, but it means that you know it's fairly thin. Uh, here you, you're showing some windows up here. These are scuppers from the roof, and uh, then we're seeing where all of the the studs are in that building as well. So we can use these to see. So right there is a is a hole. Uh, maybe the insulation didn't get in there. I don't know. But like I say, most cases we can use our, thermal, our uh, thermal imaging camera to look into a wall in this way and see, you know, do we have some missing insulation? Do we have low insulation? And uh, so that's the kind of defects that we can find in a wall. So most cases we don't ever put zero in there. Now, if we're looking at this, remember that we're supposed to have an R... 13 plus 2 on here. So we're trying to get to an R15. Well, right there's the only place that we're getting to an R15 in this entire wall, and that is precisely right here and right there. That's the only places that we're actually doing that. So, we, you know, we've got to figure out, well, what's going on here? So we've got to go a little bit further before we can actually get an average on our, uh, our value here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here and I'm going to say framing. Uh, I'm going to say insulation. And I'm going to say gaps. Now we can put in a percentage. So I'm going to use 100% on there. And then I'm going to come up here and I'm going to say framing. Generally, you know, looking at this picture here, uh, let's see, let me find a, where's a picture of a house? A uh, house in, a wall in house. Or how about if I just do thermal image of house? Let's see what I get there. Yeah, I should have done that to begin with. Um, so, well, it's not showing the studs like one, two. There, we, we, I can use that one. So you can look up here and you can see where the studs are in that wall right there. And, you know, what's going on, uh, how many studs are in there. Well, typically uh, in a wall, you have between uh, 13 and 17 percent framing in a wall, uh, depending on whether you used uh, two by or uh, 16 inches on center, 24 inches on center, 19.2 inches on center or if you're using advanced framing. Uh, so there's different ways. For this, I'm just gonna say that we're at 15% framing. So I'm gonna leave my insulation for last and I'm gonna say that I have 3%, um, now we'll say 6% gaps in that. So if I come up here and I take my 100 and I'm gonna list 15 and I'm gonna list the six, uh, percent in there, then I end up with my insulation being at 79 percent, right? So what I want to do is I want to bring all of these numbers into this uh, fashion here. So first one's going to be my framing equals that. Second one is my insulation is going to be equal to the 15.73. And lastly, uh, the gaps are going to be equal to 2.73. Now I can say that these two numbers are multiplied by each other. Actually, I got I to gotta do something. 17% uh, times this number. Bam. Okay, that's better. And I can just, no, I can't either. Yeah, I can. I can just roll that down. And there we have our real time R values. So even though as a, you know, as a whole, we have uh, a 7.11 R value in the framing because there's only 15% in that uh, whole wall, then we can only count for 1.02. So what we're going to do is we're going to add all of these together to end up with 13.657. And that is going to be our average uh, in the whole house. Did we meet it? No, we did not. Okay. 
Why did we not meet it? Well, because we had a great big old gap here. Well, let's say that we weren't at zero. Let's say that since we had an R13 in the wall, that we only decreased our gaps to say an R9. So we're gonna change that to R9. Well, we're up to 14 now, but we still haven't reached 15, even though uh, you know we don't have that R2 anywhere in here. So let's go up and change our, ins I tell you what, let's just do this. Let's let's add some uh, XPS to this. Why didn't it do that? Come on, insert, there we go. Let's add some XPS to this. And I'm only gonna add a half an inch of XPS to this. All right, and if you remember, XPS is five, an R5 per inch. Don't, don't, uh, don't just go by my word. Let's go up here and check out the thing here. So expanded polystyrene, extruded polystyrene, and right there it is, five per inch. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to say uh, that we have 2.5 because it's a half an inch. All right. So now I'm going to move this all the way over. Bam. Look what that trains to. 16.692. Now we definitely have our R13. And now we have that R2, at least an R2 in here. Let's go down to even a quarter. Let's go half of that. Uh, that would be 1.25. We'll, we'll go down. We'll only put a quarter inch piece of this on here. And we're, we're, we're at 15.4. So some of you guys may remember that they used to have these commercials where they're going to put vinyl siding on your house and it has a little bit of a backing on it. Well, that backing just so happens to be a quarter of an inch. Uh, now, it may not be XPS. It's probably more like uh, EPS. So let's change that up. EPS, we're going to put on there. And now, so it's an R4 per inch. We've got a quarter inch. So that's going to be a one. So we'll just put a one across the board and we still end up with a 15 uh, on that. We don't have our, our plus two up here, but we still end up uh, getting the average for our R value uh, that is required by North Carolina. And that's that they will look at that. The sad thing about it is if we put in R13 in the cavity, or let's say this, let's, let's change it over to a two by six wall. All right, so uh, now instead of 4.38, we're going to use, I don't know, I'll have to look it up. I can't remember. Um, we're going to use, why can I not find this? There, we're going to use 6.88, 6.88. But then, you know, we have, uh, we're using an R16 in there. Remember that this is not an R16 because it's five and a half inches in that cavity. So even using this little chart here, if a raider is not putting in the numbers correctly, then he can, you know, he can make his number look like whatever he wants to. But so how do we figure that out? So we go back over here to our insulation and we have the six and a half inch fiberglass bat in there, which is an R19, all right, at 6.25. So we can say uh, 19 divided by 6.25 as a 3.03. .03, and now we're going to multiply that times 5.5 to end up with 16 point. Oh, you know what? I was, I was off. I meant to put in six. I meant to put 19 there instead of 16. Uh, because yeah, the, the six, six inch, six and a quarter is an R19. So we can't use R19 is what I was trying to get at. We have to use 16.72 on that. But even that we still are exceeding, much exceeding what's needed uh, in our walls for North Carolina code on that. So let's see, what have all of I covered? What do I need to cover? Uh, stay in the same class. Where's the right class? That's the right class. Okay, so insulation. I didn't make a list like I did everywhere else in the insulation. Cellulose. Oh yeah, I know what it was, thicknesses. So we were talking about this, the roof or the ceiling insulation. What is the proper one? So if we go over to uh, 
12 inch bad insulation gives us an R38. Nine and a half inches gives us an R30. So let's just make a list there. So uh, fiberglass, fiberglass insulation is going to give us uh, 9.5 inches is going to give us an R30. So what about cellulose? And I didn't even think about talking about cellulose. Cellulose insulation. So cellulose insulation, blown cellulose insulation in the attic is going to give us 3.6 to 3.7, which I'm going to call 3.75 or 3.65, an average. Uh, so how much do we need to get to a, an R30? So we're going to take 30 and we're going to divide it by 3.65 to give us uh, 8.2191. I don't know. Let's see what that is in inches. 8.219178 inches, 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 come on quick, inches equals square inches. Let's see, I better do that again. 8.219178 inches plus zero equals inch and a quarter, or eight and a quarter. So we, by using cellulose insulation, then we can do 8.25 inches and end up with an R30 on that. So cellulose is actually a little bit better. Let's see what cellulose is. Cellulose is what I call rat bedding. I love it though. Uh, my whole house has cellulose uh, insulation Cellulose insulation, bam. So cellulose insulation does look like uh, wrap bedding. All right, so it's made up of all of these little, it's paper, basically what it is. And it's been coated with a uh, an, um, flat frank, ugh, flame or burn resistant compound on it. Uh, I promise you, you see this man here with his, his uh, respirator on. This guy here's got his respirator. You, if you're blowing this stuff in, by God, you better have that respirator on. It will asphyxiate you in a heartbeat. It will drown you because this stuff gets down in your lungs. Uh, don't know that, it, to my knowledge, it's not a carcinogenic, but it will slap, cut the crap out of your lungs. So this is some pretty mean stuff. Now, uh, when we're especially when we're looking at an attic. Uh, situation. If you're if you go up there and you can see your joists in your attic, you don't have enough insulation in it. Uh, it should look like that. You shouldn't be able to see those joists at all. And uh, that's one of the problems with with blown in is people think, oh well, you know, I get it to this point and I'm good to go. Now uh, you need to you need to be doing that. Uh, you need to be doing this nine and a half for fiberglass. Uh, and this is uh, was that. That was bad, wasn't it? What is blown insul blown fiberglass insulation in the attic is 2.2 to 4.3. So we're talking, uh, what's the average of that? Uh, 2.2 plus 4.3 equals divided by 2, 3.25. So if we use blown in fiberglass, uh, 3.25, 30. We'll need, we'll need, uh, well, about 9.25 inches in that as well. So cellulose still gives us a better overall uh, insulation factor, but uh, notice that the sky's uh, measuring it. So somewhere I've seen it a minute ago. When Yeah, there it is. So you see this little chart here? Uh, that has to be in your attic. Uh, the, the building inspector, if he decides that he's going to stick his head up in the attic, he needs to see this. And so there, this has to be placed somewhere that is visible to him so he can just look up there and see how much 
R values. Obviously, this is from a northern state because it's R49 to R60. And uh, so you just keep blowing that in until you get it piled up there. And then he can obviously uh, see how much you've got. It's very important to do that. It helps you as well because you're going to have some settling over this uh, in the years. And uh, notice he's got another one over here. I do uh, the same. I put them in, in several spots throughout this, the uh, the attic so that I can see where that I'm trying to get, you know, a nice even coat across through there. My attic, unfortunately, does not look like this. I've got all kinds of crap up there, uh, uh, um, air conditioners and pipes and stuff because I, my air conditioner is in the ceiling. I wish that my ceiling was this look this good, but it, unfortunately, it does not. So let's see, what else do I need to talk about? Let me go back over here and I can see this. So we talked about bad insulation, fiberglass insulation, rock wool, vermiculite. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Let's talk about that. Can you insulation? All right. See this? See that? That crap don't work. Why doesn't crap work? I'll show you why it doesn't work. All right, we've got a concrete block here. And remember what I told you about how heat moves. It's warm in house here, it's the winter time. And it's cold as crap outside here. So it's cold, this, this side's cold. Heat moves to cold, meaning that it doesn't need this. All right, this was an open cavity to begin with. Now it's got something filled in there. Do you think this is gonna change it? No, that heat's gonna hit that sucker and go right around it and out. Gonna hit that and go out. It's gonna hit that and go out. That is called a bypass. So you can fill this thing full of insulation and it don't make no, never mind. It don't care nothing about you. How can you fix that? Well, it's that thermal skin that I was telling you about. Whoops, went one too far. Bam. You put in some blue board across the front of that thing outside and inside if you want. And there's where it's gonna stop. If you have some heat flow that's gonna go out here, it's gonna hit right there and it's gonna stop. That's gonna be the end of it. Same here, same, same here. It's not gonna go any further. Now, what if we put it on the inside? My house has it on the inside because the outside was underground when I was renovating. So now I've got it on the inside. Well, pff, I don't even heat up my block. This is gone. This is gone. This is gone. My heat stops right there. That's the end of it. Dead. So it don't go any further. So that is the only way to insulate blocks. Filling it full of this crap, it is worthless. Doesn't, doesn't do a thing, but just spend your money. Now, something like this, on the other hand, this is basically an interior uh, thermal barrier. So yes, this is going to work very, very well. But uh, anything less than a solid barrier all the way across the wall is worthless. So let's look at what we put in this. And we put in vermiculite. And this is what vermiculite looks like. It's almost, it's very similar to cork. It is a mined material. Uh, and uh, this is perlite. I like this picture. So we've got, a, we've got perlite here, which is a very, very lightweight rock. And then we have uh, vermiculite, which is very similar to cork, but it is a mineral as well. Both of these are minerals. And where do you see these mostly? You see them in potting soil. So they put these in potting soil so that uh, soil does not, uh, does not pack so good. And, you know, it's, it gives us, that's why we put worms in our soil to make our, 
our uh, plants grow is because the worms go in and around that soil and loosen it up. Well, if we mix in a little bit of perlite, a little bit of vermiculite or something like that, then it, uh, it does give us uh, some good aeration in our soil. So how good is vermiculite? And uh, so in here, vermiculite is, you're gonna find out it's not very good. It is 2.13 per inch. So not good at all. Uh, and I don't even see uh, perlite. What is the R value of perlite, I wonder? R value of Estimated our value of risk system insulation. That's, I don't know if that's right or not. It may be. Yeah, okay, so loose, for, loose fill insulation, perlite loose fill insulation, one inch. Well, it's, it's better than the uh, vermiculite, 3.13, where the vermiculite was 2.13. So it's a whole one, I don't know why I keep doing that. That it's a whole one uh, R better in that. But, you know, if you're putting it in block walls, block cavities, it doesn't do you any good because it's just going to go right around those walls. Oh, da, da, da. Stone, block. Um, so block itself has a little bit of, believe it or not, has a little bit of resistance in it. And you can see those. A four inch block. Now this is the whole four inch, not per inch is 0.8. Uh, a whole 12 inch block is only going to give you 1.8. So, you know, concrete does have a little bit, it's a little bit, but not a great deal at all. Uh, wood obviously is going to give you much better. You can see how the wood stuff, 1.25 per inch uh, for softwood, cedar logs and, and larger lumber, 1.33. I don't see how they get that because the larger lumbers, once you get, you know, get so big, they start cracking and you're going to lose uh, some of that wood in there. And I don't, like I say, I don't see how they get that. So if there's anything else that I can think of, I don't see a thing. Well, of course, you know, when you're talking about your windows, uh, you can have, you can actually put in argon gas. You can, uh, you can evacuate them and you can get a little bit plus R's on that on, on your windows as well. But over time, the sealants will start dissipating. And uh, once that, if that vacuum breaks and it sucks moisture into it, then you end up with moisture on inside the wind and you can't re get rid of that. The only thing you do is just take the wind out and reseal it or not reseal it, but you got to take the window apart, get the calcium deposits in there out and then put it back together if, you know, if you want to do that, or you can just buy a new, new window or door. So I think that is going to conclude today. And does anybody have any questions? What about the spray stuff? I just was working on a house and the guy came in with a giant truck and it was like the polystyrene spray stuff with the big truck and the big machine and it comes in like a tank and then they just spray it and the dude walks in in a Breaking Bad hazmat suit. Um, <laughs> there you go. Poly polyethylene, polyurethane spray foam is 6.25 per inch. Now, that's pretty damn good. But now what is so good about spray foam? Let's think about that. Those all the gaps. Exactly. You have no gaps whatsoever. So yeah. let's look at that spray foam wall. There are absolutely no gaps anywhere. None. If it's done correctly, you know, this is this is what it looks like when it goes on. And then this is what it looks like after it's been cut off. If they've done a really good job, you're not going to have any. Oh, there's another one. That's that's probably better. They they overfill it and then they'll go back and they'll hit some of these other places. And this, you know, for renovation, this is looks like an old warehouse and they just go in there and spray the crap out of that thing. And uh, so that's probably what we're going to do with a school bus, too, when we can start renovating it, because uh, like I say, I mean, I get 
total coverage. The thing that I found most interesting was the reciprocating saw blade that the guy was using was almost like 10 foot long because it was just ridiculous like that. But his was actually on a machine. And oh, okay. Interesting. I'm, I'm overestimating, you know, the fish was this big. Yeah. But it was, it was, it was bigger than that. Like, honestly, the blade really? was than, you know, I'm not six foot, so it could have been six foot. <laughs> <laughs> Or like three four of those wall um, cavities and it's just crazy to me that he went in two guys one house one day you wow. know and, oh yeah yeah absolutely yeah and and it, it, stuff is so cool um, it is it's expensive though that's the you know that's the sad thing so yeah. let's take for instance a little kit here so it comes in a two-cylinder kit and uh, it's $372. And how far does it go? Coverage, uh, 110 board feet. All right, so you know how to figure out board foot. Board foot is actually a volume. Uh, so 110 board feet, that would be a two by six, uh, 110 foot long. I know that's kind of weird, isn't it? Let's think about that for a second. We, we got 110 le, uh, divided by, divided by? Volume is cubed, isn't it? Right? Cubed, yeah. Let's, let's start the other way. 3.5 inches plus 14.5 inches plus 96 inches equals 114 inches divided by 14, 12, 12, no, I was doing inches, 144. So one cavity is 0 0.79 board feet, that ain't right. Ain't no way in the world that's right. It's gotta be more than that. I did something wrong. 3.5 plus 14.5 plus 96 equals 114. I don't know. I'm not doing something right. Are you doing two by four or two by sixes? I'm doing two by four wall cavity. So three and a half inches deep mm -hmm. times or yeah, that's what it was, was one times, times 14.5 inches wide times 96 inches tall yeah. divided by 144 is 33 board feet. Yeah, so, 33, so 34 board feet? 34 board feet, yep. You can do three cells with that. <laughs> yeah, three cells. So you're talking $100 a little bit more than $100 a sale. But, you know, you don't have to put it that thick. Yeah. Uh, so in that wall, you're only going for two and a half inches, right? So the spray foam gives you 6.25. Uh, so we got to have an R15, say, divided by 6.25 equals, so two almost two and a half inches, and you're done. Yeah. So you can get six sales out of that. <laughs> yeah, pretty good stuff. Yeah, yes. yeah. I just thought that that was so cool because I I had only worked like or seen the cellulose stuff that you're talking about in the house that I grew up in. Um, mm -hmm. Had the recycled paper spray stuff. Yeah, and then I just saw like I knew about this this stuff because of great stuff, you know. Like, yeah, right, right. It's so awesome. Um, so but I've never seen it great in stuff. Let's talk about that. So. We have uh, closed cell foam. All right, so closed cell foam. Well, yeah. insulation. So the closed cell, what we call in the business isonine, is the regular great stuff. So great stuff. It is this can of great stuff. It is this can of great stuff, okay? That is closed sale. 
This is open cell. So where this will expand and, and, and make your windows and doors extremely hard to open and close, this does not. It will expand, but it doesn't have the strength, but it also doesn't have the insulation R value that the closed cell does. But I, I mean, you know, any of these are great. Man, I love great stuff. I wish they'd had great stuff when I was growing up. Oh, so many construction mistakes, you know, you can fix with a little <laughs> bit of great stuff and putty. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Absolutely. <laughs> that's right. Okay. Anybody else got any questions on this? Anything I did? What is that, Mr. Clay? Uh, Mr. Ca Cash, what you got there? That's my little man. Oh, my goodness. Look at that. Hey yeah, there, yeah. Tyler. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't yeah. know you had a little one like this. You could have yeah. you have brought yeah, him to class. I'd have took care of him. Yeah, he keeps him busy. <laughs> okay, so any questions on insulation whatsoever? Anything I can if you if you think of anything, uh definitely, you know, give me a text, email, something, uh, and uh, we'll definitely discuss it. So awesome. Okay, guys. I will uh, see you again on Wednesday then. Yeah, sounds good. Thank Thank you. All right. Have a good Appreciate one. Bye-bye.